discussing the Tuesday, October 27, 2020, meeting of the Portsmouth City Council to order. And Madam Clerk, uh, the first order of business is uh, to call the roll. Will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Battle? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Mr. Glover? Here. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? <laughs> Here. Mayor Rowe. Here. In accordance with Governor Ralph Northam's declaration of a state of emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic and his executive order, which he signed on March the 12th, 2020, and the local declaration of emergency ratified by the Portsmouth City Council, and due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which is continuing uh, in the nation, the Commonwealth and in Portsmouth, uh, this call meeting of the Portsmouth City Council is being held by video conference on today, the 27th day of October, 2020, without a quorum present in the City Council Chamber of Council. And we're doing this in order to reduce the likely spread of the COVID-19. And this is in accordance with uh, the governor's order and the city council ordinance of 2020-21 uh, and council ordinance 2020-102. Each member of council is participating from their home or some other remote location. And I'm in the city council chamber. Again, this is a virtual meeting that's taking place in real time. That's also being live streamed on Facebook. And after the conclusion of the meeting, uh, the city will uh, rebroadcast re this uh, meeting at its normal sites that uh, it uh, rebroadcasts council meetings. And again, Madam Clerk, we do have 100% participation, right? Yes, sir. Okay, we're ready to proceed with our agenda. The first item is the consideration of the approval of minutes. And we have the minutes of a call virtual meeting of October the 13th, 2020, and the minutes of a uh, regular virtual meeting of October the 13th, 2020. We'll consider these with uh, one motion and all of our votes tonight will be roll call oral votes. Uh, once we have the motion before us and we're ready for it, uh, I'll ask the city clerk to call the, the vote. And if you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying I oppose nay. And again, uh, so that we can put this matter before us, which is the approval of these two sets of minutes, is there a motion to approve? Move adoption. Move for approval. We have a motion that's been made. Do we have a second? Second. Good. Um, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. Again, this will be a roll call vote. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. Opposed, nay. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Mayor Rowe? Aye. Our next item on the agenda is unfinished business. We have item 20 237, which is a rezoning matter that's on its second reading. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. Zoning Amendment Ordinance Z2005. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration, is there a motion to adopt? Move adoption. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. We're ready to discuss the motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. Again, this is a roll call vote. If you're in favor of the motion, please uh, vote aye. Opposed, nay. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, sir, Mr. Battle. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Mr. Glover. Aye. 
Mrs. Lucas Burke. Aye. Mr. Moody. Aye. Ms. Simmons. Aye. Mayor Rowe. Aye. We're now at the city manager's report and item 20-248, which is a consideration the adoption of a certain ordinance. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting $20,000 of community development block grant program income and $26,945 of home investment partnership program income and appropriating said amounts in the FY 2021 community planning and development program fund. Thank you, ma'am. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration. Is there a motion to adopt? Move for adoption. Second. So second. second. We have a motion that's been made and, and duly seconded, which is to adopt the ordinance. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, I don't see any registered speakers on this item, do you? No, sir. Okay. Uh, we're ready for the question. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by uh, saying aye when, you're, when your name is called, nay, if you're opposed. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Mayor Rowe? Aye. And Madam Clerk, that motion uh, carries? Yes, sir. Uh, next item is item 20 249, which is the consideration of another ordinance. And Madam Clerk, will you read? The caption of that ordinance, please. Yes, sir. An ordinance appropriating two million eight hundred ninety seven thousand one hundred forty nine dollars that was reserved by ordinance twenty two thousand nineteen dash one oh seven from the fund balance of the general fund to the FY twenty twenty one general fund budget and transferring and appropriating said two million eight hundred ninety seven thousand one hundred forty nine dollars from the FY 2021 general fund budget to the FY 2021 Horsing Public Schools Risk Management Fund budget. Thank you, ma'am. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration. Is there a motion to adopt? Move adoption. Second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye when your name is called. Uh, if you're opposed, nay. And Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Miro? Aye. We're now at item 20 250, which is the consideration of another ordinance. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of this ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting local overtime surge funding in the amount of $90,000 from the Virginia Department of Social Services and appropriating said funds in the FY 2021 Social Services Fund for use by DSS to pay eligible staff costs resulting from COVID-19. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration. Is there a motion to adopt? Move for adoption. Thank you. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. Again, this will be a roll call vote. When you're, if you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye, opposed nay. And Madam Clerk, call the vote, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Battle. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Mayor Rowe? Aye. We're at agenda item 20 251, which is a consideration of another order, ordinance accepting uh, state grant funds. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting state opioid response to funding in the amount of $410,000 from the Virginia Department of Behavioral Health and Development Services and operating, excuse me, appropriating said funds in the FY 2021 grant fund 
for use by the Department of BHS. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration. Is there a motion to adopt? Move for adoption. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion before us. Any discussion on the motion? Again, this will be a roll call vote. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. Opposed, nay. And Madam Clerk, will you call the vote, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Miro? Aye. We're at item 20-252, uh, which is the consideration of our ordinance uh, accepting certain uh, federal grant funds. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting CARES Act CDBG funds in the amount of $426,191 and appropriating said sum in the FY 2021 Community Planning and Development Fund budget for use in preventing, preparing for, and responding to COVID-19. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question, uh, which is the adoption of the ordinance. If you're in favor of the ordinance, please indicate by saying aye. If you're opposed, nay. When your name is called, Madam Clerk, will you call the vote, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Mayor Rowe? Aye. We're now at item, uh, agenda item 20 253, which is the consideration of a certain ordinance. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance one establishing a new project in the FY. 2021 Public Utilities Capital Improvement Fund called the West Norfolk Water Upgrade Project to transferring and appropriating $1,150,000 in appropriation authority from the low pressure transmission main project in the FY 2021 Public Utilities Capital Improvement Fund budget to the West Norfolk Road Water Upgrade Project and three appropriating $1,150,000 from the fund balance of the general fund to the FY 2021 general fund budget and four transferring and appropriating the said $1,150,000 from the FY 2021 general fund budget to the West Norfolk Water Upgrade Project. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration is our motion to adopt. Move to adoption. We have a motion that's duly made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by voting aye. Opposed, nay. And Madam Clerk, will you uh, call the vote, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Mayor Rowe? Aye. We're at uh, agenda item 20 254, which is the consideration of another ordinance. And Madam Clerk, would you read the caption of that ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance authorizing the appropriation of $1,469,000 from the general fund fund balance to the non-departmental benefits retiree supplement line item in the FY 2021 general fund budget for the purpose of funding a one-time supplement in the gross amount of $1,500 to 
beneficiaries under the Portsmouth Supplemental Retirement and the Fire and Police Retirement System. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration is our motion to adopt. Move adoption. Second. second. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. We're ready for our discussion. We have one registered speaker, and that is Mark Adolke Atrosky. And sir, uh, you have three minutes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, honorable council members, and fellow interested parties. I oppose this item for two reasons. The first reason was provided by our former city manager, Dr. L. Pettis Patton, in her transmittal message to City Council for the fiscal year 2021 budget, she wrote in part, the fiscal year 2021 proposed budget includes $10.3 million in contributions, $9.5 million debt service on the pension obligation bonds, and an additional 1.5 million retirement fund contribution. The $21.3 million one-year budget impact to the plan with approximately 1,100 total participants poses significant fiscal challenges to the city. It is imperative that we analyze discretionary benefits that have been added over the years and refocus that money towards ensuring the long-term viability of this plan. When you pick up this matter, if you choose to adopt it, you are flying in face of that sound guidance. The other reason for my opposition is that seven months after that budget was unveiled, with the city still operating in pandemic mode, council is preparing to draw down our general fund balance. However, council has no audited valuation on that general fund at this point in time. That information will not be available to you until early December. So essentially, you are making a faith-based faith determination here rather than one on sound fiscal principles. Considering the fact that the pandemic is still in effect and the economic disruptions that it has wrought and will continue to produce, until its termination, the fiscally responsible approach to discretionary spending is to hold it in abeyance. Consequently, I urge you to defer this item until we know, one, what our fund balance figure is as determined by a completed audit and we know that the pandemic's effects have been have run to the have run to ground. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion on the motion, which is to adopt the ordinance? Uh, yes, sir. The chair recognizes uh, Councilman Paul Battle. And sir, you're muted. Mr. Mark Kodalke, let me say to you that the same Dr. Patton introduced a rental property to be used by the city for $46.3 million. So if that's in a gauge that you're using, you're hustling backwards. Also, let me say that these are the most vulnerable of among us. And um, the most important element in our city is the health and safety of the human beings. And so I'm going to vote yes for them to have this funding. Thank you, Mr. Mark Adultery. Thank you, sir. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. 
Uh, the motion is to adopt the ordinance. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye, opposed, nay. This will be a roll call vote. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Mayor Rowe. Aye. We're at item 20-255, which is a consideration of the adoption of another ordinance. Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of that ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting hazardous material emergency response team cost recovery funds in the amount of $1,005.58 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said sum in the FY 2021 grant fund for use by the Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration, is there a motion to adopt? Move for adoption. Second. Is there second. a second? We have a motion on the floor. It's been made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. This will be a roll call vote. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye, opposed, nay. Madam Clerk, will you call the vote, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Mr. Glover? Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke? Aye. Mr. Moody? Aye. Ms. Simmons? Aye. Mayor Rowe? Aye. We're at agenda item 20-256, which is the uh, consideration of the adoption of an ordinance accepting certain grant funds. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of the ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting state homeland security program grant funds in the amount of $20,800 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and appropriating said funds in the FY 2021 grant fund for use by the Department of Fire, Rescue, and Emergency Services. Thank you. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration, is there a motion to adopt? So move for a second. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded, ready for discussion. Any discussion on this motion? This will be a roll call vote. If you're in favor of the uh, motion, please indicate by saying aye, opposed, nay. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, sir, Mr. Battle. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Mr. Glover. Aye. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Aye. Mr. Moody. Aye. Ms. Simmons. Aye. Mayor Rowe. Aye. We're at item 20-257 which is the consideration and adoption of another ordinance. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of this ordinance, please? Yes, sir. An ordinance accepting aid to localities funding in the amount of $364,085 from the Virginia Department of Fire Programs and appropriating said funds in the FY 2021 grants fund for use by the Department of Fire, Rescue and Emergency Services. Thank you, ma'am. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration, is there a motion to adopt? Move for adopt. Second. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? If you're in favor of the motion, when your name is called, please indicate by saying aye. If you're opposed, nay. And Madam Clerk, will you call the vote, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Battle. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Mr. Glover. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Aye. Mr. Moody. Aye. Ms. Simmons. Aye. Mayor Rowe. Aye. This motion is approved, uh, like all the motions before it. Uh, we're at item 20-258, uh, which is the consideration and adoption of a resolution. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of the resolution, please? Yes, sir. A resolution authorizing the conveyance of 1024, 1102, 1104, and 1112, and 1101 5th Street to the Economic Development Authority. Thank you, ma'am. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration, it's our motion to adopt this resolution. Move for adoption. A second. 
We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, hearing none, we're ready for the question. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by voting aye, opposed nay. And Madam Clerk, will you call the vote, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Battle. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Mr. Glover. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Aye. Mr. Moody. Aye. Ms. Simmons. Aye. Mayor Rowe. Aye. We're at agenda item 20-259, which is the consideration of the adoption of a resolution uh, pertaining to a utility easement. And Madam Clerk, will you read uh, the caption of this uh, resolution? Yes, sir. A resolution authorizing the grant of a utility easement encumbering a 15 square foot portion of two Crawford Parkway to Virginia Electric and Power Company doing business as Dominion Energy Virginia. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration, is there a motion to adopt this resolution? Move adoption. Second. Any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by voting aye, opposed nay. And Madam, uh, Madam Clerk, will you uh, call the vote, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Battle. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Mr. Glover. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Aye. Mr. Moody. Aye. Ms. Simmons. Aye. Mero. Aye. We're at item 20-260, which pertains to the adoption of a resolution pertaining to a certain smart scale uh, project. And Madam Clerk, will you read the caption of the resolution, please? Yes, sir. A resolution supporting a smart scale application for the city of Portsmouth transit station project. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration. That's our motion to adopt. Move for adoption. Is second. there a second? We have a motion on the floor that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion? If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by voting aye, opposed, nay. And a roll call vote. Please call the vote, Mrs. White. Yes, sir. Mr. Battle. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Mr. Glover. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Aye. Mr. Moody. Aye. Ms. Simmons. Aye. Miro. Aye. We're at, and that motion carries with um, item 20 261, which is a consideration of the adoption of another uh, smart scale resolution. Please uh, read the caption of this resolution, Mrs. White. Yes, sir. A resolution supporting a smart scale application for the city of Portsmouth Greenwood Park and Ride Lot Project. So that we can put this matter before us for our consideration. Uh, is there a motion to adopt? Move for adoption. Is there a second. We have a motion that's been duly made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we're ready for the question. If you're in favor of the motion, please indicate by voting aye, opposed, nay. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle. Aye. Mr. Clark. Aye. Mr. Glover. Aye. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Aye. Mr. Moody. Aye. Ms. Simmons. Aye. Mayor Rowe. Aye. We're now at new business item 20 262, boards and commissions. And uh, Councilman Moody, do we have a report? No, we have uh, no uh, uh, boards and commission uh, appointments tonight to consider, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We're at item 20-263, items submitted by council members. Uh, Councilman Moody. Yes, uh, Mayor, uh, two items that I've mentioned previously and uh, want to find out the status. One is... Uh, the uh, uh, verification of the accuracy of water meters uh, throughout the city. Uh, I think that's extremely important uh, that our citizens have confidence that just like uh, just like uh, weights and measurements uh, uh, records the accuracy, checks the accuracy of uh, gasoline pumps. I think we need a system of uh, doing the same with our water meters. Uh, water is probably used more widely than gasoline. 
So we, we need to uh, we, we need to make sure those meters uh, uh, are accurate. Uh, the other item, uh, if I may, uh, Councilman Mooney, with the consensus of council, uh, let's ask the city manager to give us a report on this matter uh, by the end of the week. If you could get it out, is that too uh, too little time? Okay, good. Yes, sir. Item two. Uh, the the other item is uh, a way that we can uh, designate honorary uh, streets. Uh, I know in the past we've uh, named some streets. Uh, Ruth Brown comes to mind. Uh, uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Bismarck uh, uh, Merrick uh, also. But we, we have a lot of uh, citizens, uh, notables in our city, everything from entertainers to uh, Medal of Honor recipients to former mayors and perhaps uh, council members as well throughout history. And other cities have that. We, we see it in Newport News, uh, that, that comes to mind. But uh, that, there's a way to do that without uh, the costly aspect of renaming a street. And, and we, we, we need to uh, uh, start a program like that. And, and uh, along with uh, 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 a system of, of uh, designating who would be uh, a recipient uh, of an honorary street designation. Thank you. With with the uh, consensus of council, let's ask the city manager to study this matter and bring it back at the next work session for our first meeting in November. Uh, if you do a benchmark study, find out what other localities are doing, uh, not only in Hampton Roads, but in Virginia. Uh, and give us a report. Is that agreeable with council? Okay, thank you, sir. Very good. Any other items? Okay, we're at 20-260 uh, for report on pending items. Mr. Pace, do we have any pending items? No, ma'am. No okay. no. All right, we're at um, non-agenda speakers, and I'm going to ask the city clerk to read the protocol for uh, speakers. Yes, sir, Mayor. City Council rules require a limit of up to three minutes to speak while speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern. All comments should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the forum and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. All remarks shall be directed to City Council as a body rather than any particular member of City Council, staff, or the audience, and should be limited to matters that only force of City Council can influence. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of the quorum shall be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. Thank you, ma'am. Our first uh, speaker is Maya Phillips. Um, yes. Okay, ma'am, you ha you have the floor. Okay, it is Mia Phillips. Hi, my name is Mia Phillips. I'm the owner of Phillips Housing and Development. Um, there's an ordinance that was put into place last year that changed the ability to subdivide 100 foot lots into 50 foot lots and allowing the lots to be 5,000 square feet in area. The new ordinance requires that each lot be 60 foot wide and 6,000 square feet in area. This creates a hardship on the builder, the seller, and the city. Most parcels are sold 25 foot wide, not 30 foot wide. Owners who have houses that sit on four 25 foot parcels can no longer sell their homes with the option of subdividing to the builder. The developers of these homes are now see these houses worth the same as a house that sits on a 50 foot lot, even though those lots are larger. In most cases, it's sellers that have properties that are blighted or that need work. The city is also hurt by this new ordinance. Two brand new homes yield higher taxes due to, due to their new appraised values versus an older, smaller home that barely increases in appraised value. The next issue is that there is also an option, there should also be an option that your property, if your property is shy of just 15, 15 feet of frontage or up to a thousand square feet of square footage, there should be a variance option to build on the lot 
or subdivide instead of leaving the lot as dead or unusable land. This provides a win for the builder, the seller, and the city. Also, in this ordinance that was created, there's a clause that prevents a teardown of a house to build brand new if the two addresses were previously owned by the same owner and the lots are both 50 foot wide. Even if a house is all, even if a house already resides on a 50 foot lot, the builder cannot build on it if it were previously owned by the neighbor. This causes an economic restraint when trying to build on lots. There is no validity to its merit. The builder will also become stuck with a house that he can do nothing with. Other city building permits and requirements are much more relaxed and builder friendly. I've seen an influx of builders who have had their main concentration of home building in, Port in Portsmouth move to Hampton and Newport News. The permits process is much smoother. For example, there's no requirements to do new sewer taps, and if there is an existing house, if there is an existing house that the builder tore down, sewer taps can be costly, anywhere from twenty-five thousand to thirty-five thousand, depending on the depth. Once the builder finds a more palatable niche in another city, it's much harder to pull them back over to Portsmouth, where the restraints are much more difficult. Once contractors and builders find it harder to easily do their job, they find cities that are more welcoming and they make their job much smoother. Portsmouth is a great city with great promise. It would be a shame to have all of the potential squandered because of ordinances that handcuff the building opportunities. Thank, Were there any questions? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Our next speaker is Gary Muhammad. And, sir, you have three minutes. Yes, my name is Gary Muhammad. Uh, I reside at 1515 Lindsay Avenue. I, I, I'm in total agreement with what Mia said. Uh, she couldn't have said it no better. Uh, again, uh, we've been, uh, my name, my company is Pyramid Investment Group. I've been building here for about five years, and I ran into the same problem. I had an opportunity to buy a lot that was 200 by 100. They changed the ordinance last year and made that lot only be able to be of three houses. Again, like she said, stopping revenue from the city and stopping the building from being able to make money. The uh, the other thing is, like she said, again, is the common ownership. Is in Prentice Park, there's a lot there that's 75 by 100. It's a lot beside it that's 25 by 100. It was a multiplex. They totally built it down. One lot went one way, the other lot went the other. And neither person can be there because of the common ownership law. So, uh, I mean, you got a property there that's 4,900 square feet. It can't nobody utilize. There's no tax money being received from it. Uh, again, like I said, she couldn't have said it no better. I'm in agreement with everything she said, and uh, she covered everything for me. So that's, that's all I have to say about it. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Ron Holloway. And, sir, you have three minutes. Mayor, Mr. Holloway is not on the line. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Kareem Purchase. And, sir, you have three minutes. Madam Clerk is. He is on the he is on the line. Daniel, please unmute him. Miss White, he needs to press star six on his phone to unmute. OK, Mr. Purchase. OK, there you are. If you would start from the beginning. Am Mr. I off mute now? Yeah, you're okay. off mute. You've got this is John Rowe, mayor. You've got three minutes, sir. All right. Uh, yes, uh, my company, I'm Green Purchase. My company name, AAA Authentic Designs. We've been building in Portsmouth since 2006. Um, I agree with both Muhammad and Mia. As far as all the, I mean, the bigger issue, I guess, would be just the fact that um, the majority of Portsmouth, it seems like in like in Brighton, Prentice Park, um, Park View, those lots are 25s and 50s. Um, so the, when you changed it to 60, as far as the frontage, it caused created this problem. I'm not going to try to be repetitive. I have a perfect example. I've got a lot right now that is a 75 by 100. There's 25 foot of grass right beside me, which I will not do anything with. I won't offer the people who own it anything because, you know, of that simple fact that if I even buy it, there's no way for me to even subdivide. Because now, even though I have a hundred foot, and when I, if I could give you examples of like, I have houses that are 50 foot square foot, from 50 by 100 and 60 by 100, and you cannot tell the difference 
if you ride by, you would not know which one was a 50 or nor would you know which one is a 60. So it's really that 10 foot only hurts us and the city, um, you know, adjoining because the fact that we're no, you're no longer able to, you know, like I said, there's just going to be 25 foot of grass that's going to sit beside my lot for I don't know how long. I mean, I'm sure it'll be forever because I'm not going to buy it, nor is a neighbor because his is a 20, his is a 50 foot square, 50 foot by 100 lot. So, you know, I, like I said, these are the issues that, you know, and as far as the process already, it's already because of COVID, it's hard to try to pull a permit already without going for a variance. Um, Sam told me flat out, no, I, it's, I'm not going to be able to even get a variance. Don't apply for it. Uh, there's no way you can, because if I split this lot, the existing lot needs to have a 60 foot of frontage and the new one has, which would be 120, which totally eliminate this whole project so i just wanted to give an example of a situation where now because beside me the house that's existing only takes up 40 foot of that 75 foot lot so there's a, a total of um you know probably i guess it's like 60 some square feet of grass that's just uh, going to be sir grass. your time is your time is up thank right. you for your comments yes sir our next speaker is Mark Kodolgi Yatrosky, and sir, you've got three minutes. Good evening again, Mr. Mayor, honorable members of council and fellow interested parties. So two weeks ago, for the first time since we began operating under pandemic rules in terms of virtual meetings, as opposed to in-person meetings. The citizens, again, had an opportunity to be heard in the course of the meeting rather than asynchronously, either by recorded telephone message or by email message. And before the first public speaker could utter the first word, council voted to limit the time, the only rationale given was because we're in a virtual meeting, the normal speaking time limit was five minutes prior to the, the virtual meeting regime. Um, and council voted unanimously without discussion, without the Merle to cut two minutes off each speaker's time. Um, it really makes no sense, and it's really disrespectful to the citizens. It's hard to make a coherent argument on a complicated subject in five minutes, but to be jammed into a three-minute box and to have to deal with the logistical issues of trying to go from watching you on Facebook Live to the phone uh, app on my computer and muting and unmuting and so on, it's, it's quite disorienting as is. I believe that you should reconsider what you've done, go back to the five minutes. After all, you are representatives of the people it's your job to listen. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And Madam Clerk, uh, does that complete our non-agenda speakers? Yes, sir, it does. Okay. We have completed our agenda. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. And we have no further business, and this meeting is adjourned.